Hi everyone, welcome to Peak Survival. This is part two with Jenny, our medical toxicologist. So uh, Jenny is now going to talk to us about uh, prevention and uh, also who's getting bitten by snakes and why. So when it comes to snake bite, it's true that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, there are a lot of simple things that you can do to protect yourself against snake bite because contrary to popular belief, most bites are not accidental. The most common scenario we see is a male between the ages of 20 to 40 who's intoxicated with alcohol and is what we call intentionally interacting with the snake. Sure. Um, now this may be they're trying to move the snake in order to protect other people in the area, or it can be that they're harassing the snake in some way, trying to kill the snake. Uh, but most of the time, these interactions are occurring on purpose. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing you can do is really just not get drunk and pick up a snake. <laughs> uh, now having said that, uh, there are certainly plenty of accidental bites that happen as well. A lot of times these will be bites on the feet, whereas bites on the hand tend to be from the intentional interaction. Mm -hmm. So other things that you can do, you can clear your property of things like log piles where um, rodents tend to congregate because rodents are the food source for the snakes. Right. So anything to keep your property free of rodents will also help to keep your property free of snakes. And this includes bird feeders that can leak bird seed down that the rodents will eat and things like that. Now if you do see a snake on your property, the safest thing to do is actually to call animal control to come and relocate it, mm -hmm. but sometimes they're understaffed and very busy and may not be able to get there right away. Mm -hmm. So if you absolutely have to move it, what we recommend is taking a large plastic trash can with a very secure lid and then using something long, like a pitchfork or a shovel, to try to pick the snake up and place it into the container. And again, if you haven't had experience doing that, I would avoid it if at all possible. Sure. This is kind of a worst case scenario mm -hmm. thing. Um, but you can place the snake in the container and secure the lid and it can be fine in there for days. They don't need frequent food or water. It's mm -hmm. a safe way to keep it there until animal control can come and relocate the snake. I do have a question for you actually. Um, are people more likely to encounter a snake in the morning, afternoon, evening based on their um, behavior? It's a great question and it really depends on the weather and where you are in the country. Okay. Uh, in most places in the country, summer is the big snake bite season. Here in Arizona, at least in Phoenix, it gets so hot in the summer uh, that we actually see peaks in the spring and the fall because that's when more people are outside and being active mm -hmm. and also when the snakes are more active. Sure. Uh, they are cold-blooded, so they like being out when it's warm uh, and tend to hibernate when it's cold, but the summer is even too warm for them. And also there are just fewer people out recreating in the outdoors when it's 120 degrees out. Makes sense. <laughs> uh, so we tend to see the peaks sort of in April and again in the fall with the snake bites at our Poison Center.